Today we're going to do something that we've done a few times now, uh, and I think this is a really important time of the year to practice this. It's called Lexio Divina. So some of you have done this before, and I know some of you, maybe this is brand new. But either way, I want to encourage you uh, in this next, let's say, 15 minutes or so, to really make yourself available to God. Um, Lexio Divina means divine reading or divine word, and it this is a Christian practice that's been around for about 2,000 years. And the idea here is that um, God is speaking to us all the time, but often we are not listening or we are not able to hear God speaking. I'm reminded of the passage in Scripture about Elijah, where Elijah goes up on the mountain and there's this mighty earthquake and then there's this great storm and then there's this uh, loud, crazy wind and then all that loudness and chaos, um, the assumption is if God were to speak, God would speak in some loud way that you can't miss. But God wasn't speaking in any of those ways. And it's finally when all of that subsides in the stillness and the quiet that God speaks and Elijah hears. And during this time of year, we get whipped into a frenzy and we go, 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 and the noise, noise, noise. And we find ourselves at the end of Christmas going, why do I feel so empty and crazy? Well, my friends, we need to practice listening for God's presence, being open and aware of how God is speaking to us. And so today is a time to practice that. So this is a spiritual discipline, and I'm inviting you today to just be open. And uh, what we do in Lexio Divina is we read the passage four times, and uh, Today's passage is a much shorter passage than we've done this with before. I know some of you, when we've done this before, go, man, that's a long time, that's a lot. This is a shorter one today, but the idea here again is, okay, there's a lot going on in my life. I want to take some time to listen, to listen. And so as you listen to the passage today, we're not at all thinking about how does this apply to anybody else but me, myself. How does this apply to you? In other words, what is God saying to you right now? It's the only thing we're listening for. And so each time through, there's going to be different directions that I'll give to you. And at the end of each reading, um, we'll take 30 seconds to a minute of quiet. And during that quiet, just talk to God. And for some of us, that quiet will be a stretch. That's okay. We're growing. We're growing and stretching here. But this first time through, all I want you to be doing is listening for a word or phrase that jumps out at you, that stands out at you. Okay, we're not trying to understand the whole thing. We're just listening for words or phrases that jump out at us. And when I'm done reading, I want you just to repeat those things to yourself and talk to God about it. So maybe you hear the word joyful, and you just repeat that, joyful, 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 and see what comes up for you. Okay, again, we're making room for the Spirit to move for the spirit to speak. So listen for words or phrases that stand out. We'll take some quiet time and then I'll ask for a few people to share those words or phrases, okay? From Romans 13. And feel free to close your eyes and just listen if you'd like. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires.
Okay, my friends, um, we're not going to share anything more than a word or a phrase that popped out at us. So if you've got any of those to offer, please, what word or phrase stuck out to you? Time. Addie, what? Light. Time. Work? The works of darkness. Now is the moment. Wake. The armor of light. Put on Jesus. Let us live honorably. What else stood out to you? What did you hear? Wake up from your sleep. To gratify its desires. Any other words or phrases that stood out to you? Maddox? Sleep? The night is far gone. We'll take one or two more, and then we'll continue. Jealousy. Freedom. Thank you. All right, friends, we're going to read this again. And this time, as you listen, uh, I want you to consider its meaning for you. Its meaning for you. What does this mean to you? What do you hear? And again, we'll have some quiet time afterwards and meditate on that meaning. Talk to God about that meaning, that meaning for you. Romans 13. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So friends, um, what does the text mean to you? What does it mean to you? And just short little excerpts here. What does it mean to you? What do you hear? Joanne? Jesus is coming and I need to live honorably as he wants me to. Thank you. What else? Daniel? Hmm. You're supposed to be like, you already know what it's supposed to be like, but there's so much weighing you down until you get to that point. Hmm. You already know, but there's so much weighing you down. So it's kind of a be aware of that. It's already there, just what's weighing you down. Okay, what does it mean to you? What do you hear? Ayana? Hmm. 
Thank you, Rihanna. She, she said for her, the sleep means the daily grind, those, thing, those patterns, we just kind of those routines. And the wake up means find the purpose in that. Don't just sleepwalk through the day, but there's purpose there. There's meaning there. Find it. Yeah, thank you. Brett? You know what time it is. Now is the time. It sounds like I hear you saying um, it's like a, a word of urgency. Like, let's be more serious about this. Now is the time. Let's do it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Josie. Josie was focusing on that part about the armor of light, and it made her think of the armor of God, like in our Sunday school and our children's ministry that they sing all the time, and the idea that when we put this on, we're protected, but also helps us to live the way God wants us to live. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Mm, put it on means do, you have to do it. You put it on. It's intentional. You got to put it on. Thank you, John. Andy. And he's noticing the contrast, the stark contrast, night and day, um, dark and light, and the reminder that as Christians, sometimes we're called to be in contrast to the world around us. In particular, for him, he said, it reminds me that I need to be asking always, what would Jesus do um, to do that thing? And th that might sometimes be the opposite of what else is going on around me. Yeah. yeah. Haley? Mm -hmm. She heard the quarreling and how often we get so caught up in proving our point or trying to win the argument that we totally lose track of what it was all about to begin with. And it gets us off track. That's absolutely true. Anybody else? We'll take one or two more here. Mm, thank you, Ivy. She said you, it's like you had the little light but turned it into, did you say armor? Let it surround you because he has plans for you. So this little light isn't just to keep right here, but it's God has a plan to use it. So let it surround you. Thank you. One more. Ginger. Ginger said it's this put on the armor is a reminder to be intentional every day. When you start your day, put it on. Start your day that way by putting on the armor so that you live intentionally. Thank you. Friends, we're going we're gonna to read through this a third time. And um, this time as you listen and as you meditate and pray afterwards, the question is, um, how does this make you want to act? How do you want to respond? What, is, what are you being called to do? As you listen to this, as you listen to this this time, what, how are you being moved to change or to do something you haven't been doing? How does this make you want to act in your daily life? Okay? Romans 13. 
Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. So friends, how are you feeling moved to respond? How does it make you want to act in your daily life? How is God speaking? Where do you hear God speaking to you here to do or not do? Live honorably. God what? Act when the Holy Spirit nudges. Yeah. Renee. Let's make no provision, Renee. Here's in that. Okay, don't. Don't put myself into situations where I'm going to be drawn away from God. Instead, surround myself with people and places that help me connect with God. Help me connect with God. And, and let me say, I want you all to be thinking, how does this make you want to act? The tendency as we read this will be able to think, well, you know, uh, I know how our society should change. No, no, no. You. How do you want to act? Ken. Thank you, Ken. That challenge to stop focusing on what you want and instead realize that God will give you what you need. How do I become who God wants me to be? Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Christy. A constant reminder to put God first in your life. We always need that reminder. Absolutely. Daniel. Daniel was saying that the wake up reminds him of how intentional we have to be for, in literally waking up and getting out of bed and moving forward and for him in other areas of life to get up and move and act and be intentional in doing that. Stop making the excuses to lay there a little longer. Okay. Let's hear a few more. Leona.
see it as a gift or opportunity. Yeah, Leona is lifting up, you know, in the transition to them moving to this community, she still doesn't have the, the, the job and permanent work hours that she'd like, but instead of dwelling on how that's not what she wants, instead looking at, oh, I've got time at home I wasn't expecting, maybe that's an opportunity to serve my family, to help them make this transition. We can see, you can see it as a gift rather than as something in the way. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, thank you, Chelsea. She, for, for Chelsea, it was really that middle section about driving out the darkness and letting the light in and, and saying, you know, daily I, ha- I have to make that, I have to be aware of that and be intentional about um, pushing the darkness out and, and welcoming the light in and that that's a daily, a daily battle for us. And we all have that darkness in us. Yeah, Andy. Thank you, Andy. Andy was saying, you know, there's sort of two sides of that. There's a sense of, boy, there's so much for me to try to do to be the way God wants me to be, and that can almost seem defeating or overwhelming. And yet the optimism to say, well, wait a second, God's asking me because it's possible. So let's just work for that, right, and live into it. And of course it won't be perfect, but um, we can do all things. Amen. Brett. So Brett's hearing a call to action, um, rather than to be passive, but to be to a call to action. Are we allowing the culture to impact us, or are we impacting others? Are we um, intentional in making a difference? We, and, and Brett said, especially this time of year, there's more opportunity you bump into people. So let's uh, be on the, uh, on the positive, on the intentional side. Let's do one or two more here, and then we'll, um, our, we'll do our last round. So... Anybody else? Haley. That doesn't get you anywhere. Hmm. Haley's really hearing this call to hear that, to recognize the difference between what I want and what I need, and recognizing that focusing on on what I think I want um, isn't helpful, but rather, uh, what do I need? Let's do one more. Anybody else have have something to share? How does this make you want to act? How do you want to respond? What's God stirring in you with this text? Annette? Thank you, Annette. She hears this sense of urgency, this call to action, and all those times where you think, well, I should. No, just then do it. Then just do it. Wonderful.
Friends, we're going to do this one more time. And this time, there's, um, we're not sharing afterwards. There's going to be a, a little a more extended quiet time. Uh, and then um, Ben will start playing in the background also during that time. And um, ultimately, though, this time is to let it all sink in and then just talk to God about it. Be open to the Spirit prompting you, pushing you, prodding you. Um, what's God want to really say to you with this text today? And then uh, maybe you want to expand that around, okay, Christmas is coming. How am I going to live this season of Advent? What do I need to be doing in my life right now? How does, how, what is God speaking to me about today? Okay, so hear this, and then we'll um, take some extended time, quiet time in meditation and prayer. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone. The day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Mm-hmm. 